Romans chapter 12. Let's look at verse 1 and 2. And just uh, talk about these two verses for a few minutes. Uh, of course, up till now, Paul's been talking about his salvation and, and the blessings of being saved and the benefits and all that stuff up through Romans chapter number 11. And then when you come to chapter 12, it, it, it changes. It starts talking about life and the separated life, the Christian life, the dedicated life. So it, it changes. And uh, in our day today, most people just have a concept of salvation and they forget about service. Uh, you, you ain't saved just to go to heaven, but you're saved to serve the Lord right. and live for Him. And so it changes here in chapter 12. So we'll look at it right quick. Verse 1 of chapter 12, he says, uh, Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And the last phrase in that verse, he talks about the will of God. The will of God. And that, that would be my, my thought this morning, would be the will of God. I was thinking about this. Uh, most folks... Uh, most folks do not know the will of God for their life. And uh, most folks have never really sought for the will of God in their life. Some people don't even care what the will of God is for their life. They're just saved, they come to church, and that's about it. But there's a will of God for everybody's life. Sometimes we think about the will of God and we think, well, it's the will of God they preach. It's the will of God somebody goes to mission. And that is true. It's, it, it has to be the will of God for somebody to preach. It has to be the will of God for somebody to go to the mission field. But there's more to the will of God than just being a preacher or being a missionary. Everybody in this building, there is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God for your life. And, and the will of God consists more of just uh, doing a service for the Lord. Sometimes the will of God has to do with what you have and what you don't have. It's the will of God. There's a lot of people that are bound up in debts and just make it, barely making it because they've got things that it wasn't the will of God for them to have. Amen. <laughs> Come on now, help me out. Uh, they wanted it. They, they wanted it, self-wanted it. And, uh, and personally, personally, and I've been this way all my life, since God saved me and called me to preach, I've always felt this way. I've, not, I've, I've failed a few times uh, in, in it, but I've always felt everything you do, everything you have, there's a will of God. Amen. In, fact, in fact, even in, in the church life, uh, you ever heard that saying, just join the church of your choice? Well, you don't really have a choice. It's where God wants you to be. Right. Right. Psalms 92, it says, those that be planted in the house of God. If you plant something, Slick, you on purpose plant it somewhere. Uh, you want to plant something, a tree, you on purpose plant it in your yard, a certain place in your yard. And that's the way God is. God's got a place for you to go to the house of God. And it's up to you to find that place. And if you get in that place, and it's the will of God for you to be in that church, then that's when you'll be happy. And the reason a lot of folks are so miserable and unhappy is they're not in the will of God. Will you live? Will you work? What you have? What you do? Will you go? Decisions you make. Everything must be considered. Is this the will of God? Amen. Uh, I've told you here before in preaching, uh, I bought a Torino one, Ford Torino back in the day. And all my buddies had one and I wanted one. And I'd always prayed about them. <laughs> I didn't pray about this one. And Kay even asked me, did you pray about it? I said, I want it. And I got it. Theirs run fine. I had all kinds of trouble. I couldn't have to keep mine running. Then the Lord made me keep it for at least a year just to whoop me, I guess. I couldn't get rid of it. I couldn't even get rid of the thing. And I didn't enjoy driving it. I was afraid to drive it. afraid it was going to break down. And I was miserable. You know why? I got it, and it wasn't the will of God for me to have it. And from then on, I really seriously prayed about cars that I buy. Every car I buy, I pray about it. 
make sure that's what I got. And most of the time I put 200, 250,000 on them, no problems, uh, if you find the will of God. So there is a will of God in your life. Uh, it may not be the will of God for you to preach, but it may be the will of God for you to be the janitor. And you know what? If that's the will of God for you, you ought to be the best janitor that you can be. Yeah. Right. may be the will of God for you to just sing. Amen. may be the will of God for you to just teach a class, teach the kids. It may be the will of God for you to be a deacon, usher. And uh, uh, I told my boy when they first asked him to be an usher, he called me and said, Daddy, they want me to be an usher in the church. What do you think? I said, well, you pray about it, and if you feel like that's what you want to do, you be the best usher that they've ever had. Amen. You be there, be on time, look good, look sharp, walk around slow. <laughs> Amen. Don't be one of them fast deacons, you know. <laughs> fast uh, uh, ushers. Uh, but, you know, we ought to pray that we ought to be the best. And whatever the will of God is. We had a lady in our church, and she said, Preacher, I want something to do. And it's an older lady, older lady. And I told her, I said, Well, I said, uh, she said, I can't sing, and, uh, and, and all and different things. And, and, and I told her, I said, you ever thought about a card ministry? And her face just lit up. And this lady's in her late 70s. And she, her face just lit up. And she went home and prayed about it. And next thing you know, people started getting cards from her. Wow. They started getting cards. They're sick, they're out of church, going through problems, having killed their kids. They'd get a card from her. And you know what? Her, her, her countenance changed. Her joy, she was just so happy. And I'd hear people say, I got a card from Miss McKinney. I got a card from Miss Kitty. And I told her one day, I said, how are you doing, Miss McKinney? She said, preacher, all these years, said, I finally found what the will of God for me is. Amen. It's a card ministry, you know? Amen. So you don't never know, but God's got a place for everybody. And the thing about it is, everybody doing the will of God for their life, it forms a body, it forms a church. And things get done, and things get accomplished. Amen. I thought about the will of God, and I, I wrote down, uh, uh, will of God is being in the condition where you uh, can find the place God can use you. It's also being in the condition you can step away from self-will to God's will. Amen. It's not, Paul said it's not, Paul said, I'm crucified to Christ, and nevertheless I live, yet not I. But it's Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself. Paul said, it's no longer what I want, it's what God wants. Amen. It's not longer, no longer where I want to be or what I want to do or where I want to go, it's what God wants in my life. And you know, we ought to consider that in our day. You ever think about the nation of Israel? The nation of Israel wondered. The will of God was for them to go to Canaan. But they accepted the permissive will of God and he permitted them just to wander in the wilderness. And you know what? They was content just to wander. <laughs> but think about all they missed out on. Amen. All the things they missed out on. The, uh, the land, the flow of milk and honey. The, the fruit and all the victory and the blessings and the provisions of God. They could enjoy it if it had just went a little farther and got in the will of God. But they never, for 40 years, they wandered. And never did, never experienced one day in the will of God. Amen. And all they missed out on. You know what you miss out? If you do not know and do not fulfill and find the will of God for your life. For your life. I had a pastor call me yesterday. and He said, Brother Mike, he said, I need some advice. I said, okay. And he said, uh, our, our church situation, you know, the virus and different things that's going on and and he said, uh, he said, now, so-and-so of their church and so-and-so of their church. And I, and I told him, I said, let me just stop you right there. I said, you do what God wants you to do for your church. Don't worry about nobody else's. You do what you, God wants you to do and what works for your church. Don't worry about everybody else's church. You know what? We worry about what everybody else is doing. You ought to find the perfect will of God for your life. Amen? So let's look at this. I, I outlined this. And uh, let's, let's look at this for a minute. You know, let me just say this too. The Bible talks about being Christ-like. Being Christ-like. Somebody said, I want to be Christ-like. Will you think about Christ? He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. In the garden of Gethsemane, you know what he said? Not my will. Thy will be done. Jesus himself placed himself in the will of God. He says, not what I want, 
If this is, you know, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. Even Jesus himself placed himself in the will of God. I'm glad he did. And you know, and if we're going to be Christ-like, we're going to have to place ourselves in the will of God. So let me, let's look at it just, just right quick. Uh, we'll look at it. First of all, I thought about it in verse number 2, the last phrase, the will of God. That is, the, if you're taking notes, that's the reality. The reality of the will of God is there is a will of God. He said that you... Uh, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the reality is there is, there is a will of God Amen. for your life. Amen. Uh, uh, when I was pastoring church, uh, we'd have revivals. And, and, uh, uh, and I'm not throwing off on other people. They do what they want to. But some people just have whoever's popular. <laughs> you know, whoever's popular. Whoever's doing all the good preaching in them days, that's who they have. And that's okay. That's their business. But sincerely, I always really tried to really pray who God wanted to come and preach to our folks. Sometimes I'd have some of it. You know, I don't think there's no big guys and little guys, but just for preaching purposes, I'd have what to call some of the bigger guys, you know, because God had put them on my heart. Then sometimes, sometimes uh, it would be just somebody that had no recognition, just uh, pastor a little church somewhere, 25, 30 people, and God would put them on my heart, and they would come. You know what I was interested in? I was interested, I wanted the will of God for those services. I wanted the will of God for the, the life. And so the reality is, every one of us does have a place, a will that God has for us. Amen? May be the will of God for you just to be a giver, or whatever. So that's the reality of it. There is a will of God for your life. The question is, are you in it? Or you're looking for it. Have you found it? Amen. Uh, when I left, when I left Gilead, uh, I didn't have to leave. I didn't have to leave. Uh, they took care of me well uh, uh, in the financial realm. Uh, I didn't have no problems. I had good people, uh, and everything was going well. I didn't have to leave. And and personally, I worried about it. <laughs> you know, I ain't not as young as used to be. <laughs> in in in. Going on five years ago, I worried about it. I thought, well, am I going to make it? What's going to happen? You know, what's going to take place? What's going to be? And, and uh, But I really prayed about it, and I felt like God spoke to my heart. This is the will of God for you to leave. And I left on the fact that, that I felt that it was the will of God. And you know what? In these few years, God has proved himself over and over and over that I am in the will of God. Amen. And I'm happy. In case, probably as happy as we've ever been. Just doing what we're doing now, uh, and 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 I found out, you know, this the joy that I have, the provisions that God has took care of us, and the open doors that He's took for us. I found myself happy because I know I'm doing what God said. I'd hate to be out of the will of God because that's miserable. Amen. Yeah. And so the reality is, there's the will of God. There's the will of God for your service. There's the will of God for things you'd have. In fact, this is probably make everybody mad, but. I think it's the will of God who you marry. Yeah. And if some people had spent more time praying about the will of God, who God would have them to marry and live with, be a whole lot less divorces. <laughs> Amen. 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 Oh, Lordy. Anytime you mention offerings or divorce, you get in trouble. Amen. <laughs> but uh, I, I think, I, I personally, I think, and you young folks, you ought to pray who God wants you uh, to be a partner with. Amen. Amen. All right, so there's the reality in verse 2, the closing, the will of God. Then I thought about the request. Look in verse 1, the request. Paul says, I beseech you, or I beg you, therefore, brethren, the bro by the mercies of God. Paul said, I, I, I beg you, find the will of God. He, he says, brethren. Who's he talking about? He's talking about us that are saved. When he talks about brethren. He's not talking about just men. He's talking about us that are saved, born again. He challenges and he begs every one of us to request, brethren, that, that, he, that by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice that you might find the will of God. He is begging you and beseeching you and requesting for you to find the will of God. You know why he's requesting that? Because he knows that's the only true place of happiness is in the will of God. And so he is requested, he is begging you and, and beseeching you by the mercies of God. I'm going to tell you what, it's just the mercies of God that we even get to do anything for God. Right, yeah. 
It's just the mercies of God that He even paid attention to us to save us. Amen. It's just by His mercy and His grace that we can do what we can do. And even who who would even want us to be a part of the church outside of Christ? Amen. And some of us, if we look at our life, we ought to thank God and rejoice and shout every day that God, by His mercy, made a way for us to be saved and be a part of the work of God. And Paul is beseeching you by the mercy of God. He's requesting, he's requesting you, begging you, beseeching you to find the will of God. I think about this, I think about this in so many ways. I preached a message at our church one time. I, I preached on how many times do I have to preach on this? <laughs> That's what I preached on. That's what I preached on. How many times do I have to preach on this? You know, you preach on how in a prayer life. And then nobody has one. You have to come back and preach on it again. Or preach on being faithful. You know, preached on being faithful one Sunday morning. They filled it all up. Half of them didn't come back that night. I thought, you know, what good did it do to come to order? You know, if you think how many times you have to preach on this stuff and tithing and all this stuff. You know, one time you ought to get it. You ever looked at your kid and said, how many times do I have to tell you that? Yeah. And sometimes the preacher won't look at the people and say, how many times do I have to tell you that? But you know, we're, we're, and when preachers preach hard, they're requesting, they're asking, because they know if you get to that place, that's where your joy, that's where your happiness is. Amen? Amen. It's just like Paul in the Corinthians. He didn't like that thorn, but God turned around. He's begging for God to take it, and God turned around and said, No, it's the will of God. You have it. Mm. And you know what? Paul found joy. He said, Therefore, I rejoice gladly. Uh, that, that thorn, that hurt, turned to joy and happiness because Paul realized that thorn was the will of God for his life. Sometimes even hardships and difficulties is the will of God. Amen? For our, our hearts and our lives. And so, so there's the reality, there's the request. And then look at verse number 1 also. There's the, the route. He said that ye present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. So the route is you. You ever had somebody, I've heard people pray, Lord, put me in the will of God. Now that's a dangerous prayer in one way. Because <laughs> some of us are so stubborn, if he put us in the will of God, he may have to put you through hardships and difficulty to get you to get to the will of God. It's easier if you just present yourself. He said, present you. The route is you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. A reasonable sacrifice, a, a sacrifice. You know what they done to the sacrifice? They killed it. It died. It died. And you know what God wants us to do? To die to ourselves. When you present yourself as a sacrifice, you're dying to yourself. You're laying yourself down on that altar. If you ever came down and just presented your whole body, mind, soul, body, hands, feet, eyes, just give everything to God. I remember the old timers used to talk about that. They'd come and lay themselves down the altar, and the Lord, they'd, they'd, they'd pray that prayer, Lord, like, my eyes, my hands, my mind, my feet, everything, I give it to you, my whole body, my whole life. Amen? And so that's what he's talking about, a living sacrifice. You ever heard somebody say, well, I'd die for the Lord? He ain't interested in you dying for him. He don't even want you to die for him. God ain't looking for martyrs. He's looking for people that will live. He said a living sacrifice. Holy. That gets most of us right there, ain't it? Holy. Holy. Uh, acceptable unto God. Now, catch that phrase. The route is you come and present yourself, you die out to yourself, and, and, and you confess your sins and get your life clean, and the holiness of God comes in your life, and God is the one that you're trying to be acceptable to. Amen? Amen? He's the one you're trying to please. He's the one. My, my son is working at the, a job, and, and uh, he, he, he talked about, well, this and said that, and this and said this, and... And he said, so-and-so said, and I looked at him, and I said, I'm going to tell you what you need to do. You need, I said, who's your boss? He told me. I said, that's the one you need to please. He's the boss. And sometimes we're worried about what everybody else thinks. God is the one. God is the one they want to please. God is the one. And, and, and even as preachers, we, we fight that. Gosh, I know we, you, you, we face this. 
You ever get a message sometimes, John, and you think, whoo, I don't want to preach that. Uh, whoo. And you really don't want to preach it because you're sitting there thinking, this and this and this and this and needs that. And if I preach that, they're going to think, well, he's just throwing it at me. Amen, I've done that. I think, man, if I preach that, they know, I know. <laughs> you know, I don't want to preach that. Uh, but you know what? You you have to preach to please him. Right. You preach to praise the Lord. You, you sang to praise the Lord. You know what? Singers, don't, don't, don't get on me here. But you know, sometimes, if you're going to sing, and, so, and, and you feel like it's the will of God for you to sing, and you're going to be a singer in the church, sing song, and you know every time you come to church, there's a possibility, Brother James, you're going to sing. You know what you ought to do? You ought to pray all week, Lord. What song should I have ready to sing? Amen. If anything gets, on my, if anything gets on my nerves, it's calling somebody to sing, and they say, well, you going to sing tonight? Well, I don't know. I could. I guess I could. Let me find one. And we're sitting there five, six minutes waiting on them to find their tape. <laughs> the guy upstairs, he's got to find it. He's a nervous wreck up there because he can't find the one you want. Amen. <laughs> if you're going to sing, you ought to go by the sound room and say, hey, if I get called on today, this is my tape, and it's number four. I'll be ready. And if they don't call on me, we'll do it again next week. <laughs> amen. <laughs> and all the singers said amen. 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 Uh, uh, see there, I, I think it's a will. I think there's the will of God for a certain songs to be. If you're the choir leader, you ought to pray every every week. Lord, what songs do you want me to sing? I mean, I told my song leader, I said, you take that songbook home with you. Every Sunday night, you leave with a songbook. And I said, all week long, you get that songbook and you pray over, it, lay it down, pray over. It, say, God, what songs do I need to sing Sunday? And how many times he'd sang songs about the blood? I was preaching on the blood. He'd sang songs about heaven. I was preaching on that. Yep. And it would go along. So everything is important. Everything is important. Amen. The songs that we sing, the, the messages that we preach. And, and so we have to present our body, give our body wholly acceptable unto God. Amen? It's, it's kind of like getting married. Get in trouble again here. When you get married, you know, now they got these contracts. I wouldn't marry nobody with a contract, would you? What do they call it? What is that word? Prenuptial. So that's what I was trying to think of. Kay ain't here. She always takes care of it. Them prenuptial agreements. I guess there's somewhere you got to have that, but I wouldn't marry nobody. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to marry you, but you can't have this and you can't have that. You can't do that and you can't do that. I'll give you my whole set, but you can't have my money. I said, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I want you, your money, I want everything. And, you know, they want everything you got, but they don't want you to have everything they got. Come on now, help me out. <laughs> Come on. Uh, you say, well, preacher, what if, if, you, if, what if we want to hang on to that stuff? Let's stay single. <laughs> Amen. But when you come together, you give yourself to each other every time. And that's the way God is. Sometimes we want God to have certain parts of us. Certain things in our life, but go, we're going to hold on to this. No. Present your body a living sacrifice. He didn't say, he didn't say part of your body. Present yourself, yourself completely, holy. See, God's going to take it all or nothing. Amen? Amen. All righty. I'll try to do better preaching today, okay? But anyway, there's the reality, there's the request, there's the route. Then look at the reasonableness of this. Verse 21, he said, present your body a living sacrifice, holy, except God. Now look at this. Which is your reasonable service. Yeah. In other words, he said, after you give everything, it's just a reasonable service. Right. We've got that idea. If we give everything to God, well, we're just super. Uh, yeah. I, wish, I wish some preachers could learn that. You ever see these preachers, they come walking in. You ever see a boy? They, they, some of them make me sick, you know, they... I'm so old, I can just say whatever I want to say. <laughs> but you know, when you ever seen them, Brother Josh, they come in, boy, they come into your church, they're going to preach for you, or they're coming in to visit with you here, they come, you know, like, man, I am here. Uh, I got that Bible up there. Everybody, I'm here. Uh, just get a seat and sit down. Shut up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They come in like, my ministry's the greatest ministry. There ain't no little ministry any greater than my ministry. Well, God said, it doesn't matter what you've done, it's just a reasonable you just thank God he had, to, he had to let you have a little part. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Ain't no big eyes and little eyes. Right. Amen. Amen. 
If you've been called to preach and you ain't preached for 30 days, you're just as much a preacher as somebody been preaching long as I have. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on now, help me out. I mean, I've been preaching a long time. It's, in fact, when I come back in March, it'll be 55 years wow. this, this Sunday I come back in March. Y'all already know I was coming back in March. I hate to disappoint y'all, and I hope you're, for the next month y'all will be greed, but I'll be back. <laughs> Amen. But, uh, but it don't matter how long. It's just a matter of you who are in the will of God. And you are doing the will of God for your life. Amen. And, and whatever you do, it's just a reasonable service. If you sing, if you teach, if you usher, if you're a janitor, if you're a song leader, if you're a missionary, whatever you're doing, it's just a reasonable service unto God. Amen. Tell you what, we, 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 couldn't, we couldn't measure up to what God done for us anyway. Amen. And then, then look at the rejection in this, in this, the will of God. He said, and be not conformed to this world. The rejection is, if you're going to find the will of God, there are some things of this world you're going to have to reject. Probably some things that probably wouldn't be wrong, but it just ain't the will of God for you. <laughs> Amen. And we're so controlled by this world. I was telling some of the men for church, I seen this thing the other day, and it, and it had this Amish, Amish guy standing there. And this lady was talking to him, and she said, how come, how come you Amish people don't get the virus? He said, we don't have a TV. <laughs> Y'all get that later, Thad. <laughs> We're controlled by the Internet and TV. We're controlled. You ever be sitting around and you ain't hungry at all? They start advertising pizza. You're starving to death, and the next thing you know, you're telling your wife, call orders one of these <laughs> Amen. Kay got, a, Kay got a $10 discount thing, thing from Bath Body. What is that? Bed, bed, Bath, and Body, or something like that. She got a $10 thing a while back in the mail. I was taking her, and I, and I don't ever open her mail. She don't open mine. We don't open nobody's mail. And I laid her, I always lay her mail down there. I don't care what it is. She, she does her own mail. And, uh, and, and there was a ten dollar gift. She said, "Oh, I got a, they, they sent me a ten dollar gift, uh, gift uh, or discount or something, ten dollar thing." And I told her, I said, she, "She said we need to go up there." I said, "It takes ten dollars to get up there." <laughs> I said, "Take ten dollars, guys, get up there. Just do without and stay home. I'll give you ten dollars." <laughs> I, I said, "I'll give you ten dollars, and we don't have to go." Because I said, "You ain't gonna get nothing for ten dollars. It's gonna cost me forty or fifty more." That gift, oh, ten dollars. Ain't no way some of y'all laughing because you do the same thing. Huh? Get five dollars off. Woo, let's go. <laughs> Amen. Come on. <laughs> years ago, years ago, they, they, uh, we, we, I was with a preacher and we was going to get some gas in my car to pull over our brother Josh and, and it was, uh, I, I can't remember, back way back there, like, say, dollar dime. Y'all don't remember those days, but it said dollar dime. And across the street, it said dollar nine. I said, let's just go over here and get it. It's cheaper. Got ten, ten, uh, ten gallon, I think it was. He said, well, preacher, you saved nine cents. <laughs> he said, it probably cost you nine cents to go back across the street. <laughs> Ain't that what we are? I'll tell you how we are. <laughs> we'll go to the grocery store. And we'll get everything but bread and everything but this. We'll say we can get it cheaper over at Miser's or whatever that is over. And so we'll leave that grocery store, drive all the way over, buy a loaf of bread, 25 cents cheaper. <laughs> Costs more than that to get over to get it. You know what? It controls us. The advertising world controls us. The world controls us. Fashion, new fashion comes... So somebody the other day, I said, every new fashion that comes out, every worldly dress fashion comes out, Christian ladies have to try it. <laughs> Boy, they get no way in there. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> we got to try it. That's, we don't be out of style. We don't be out of fashion. Amen? Yeah. We got to try it. Every new, we got 14 guns, and we got to, they come out with a new one. We got to try it. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> new golf club comes out. We got to try it. You know what? We're controlled by that. You know what he said? He said, be not conformed to this world. I looked that word up, conformed, and it means, uh, it means to comply to rules and standards. 
In other words, he said, do not be, do not comply to the rules. and say, Do not be conformed. In other words, don't let the world control your whole life. Amen. I know there's some things in the world we have to face and have to deal with. But don't be controlled by the world. Amen? And we are. We're controlled. We're, sometimes we're more controlled by the world than we are uh, the Spirit of God. And uh, what, let's see, what we could call it, the uh, religious realm. Amen. Sports controls us sometimes more than faithfulness to church. We're more interested in watching little Junior knock a knock a ball over the fence than we are being faithful to the house of God. Amen. I'm not being hard on you. I'm just saying sometimes that controls us more. Controls us more than uh, anything else. It's amazing what pulls people pulls people out of the house of God. Pulls people out of the ways of God. A lot of preachers just went down because the world. They had to have the world. They had to have things of the world. A lot of Christian people just went down because they were controlled by the world. They got to have this. They got to have that. They got to do this. Got to. Everything comes up. We got to try it. We got to do it. Amen. Amen. We got to go try it. New new entertainment shows up. We got to go try it. Amen. Come on now, help me out. <laughs> new style. New fashion. Comes out. We we gotta have it. We gotta try. Amen. And uh, I, my wife told me the other day. She said you need to get you some new clothes. I said why? She said you've worn them same sort of clothes for fifteen years. I said well they still look good and they still work. And nobody else knows it but me and you. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so she taught me into going buying two sport coats. I told her I said well I'll go get two sport coats. So I went up there and got. Two sport coats and and, uh, and everything, and I told her I hung them in the closet. She said, "Now which ones you gonna get rid of?" I said, "None of them." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Go down to your closet and start." <laughs> she got two closets. I got one. I said, "Go down there and start, and when you work your way through, I'll, I'll hopefully, you know, be dead by then and come, you know." But. Uh, but you know what? We feel like we got to change fashion. We got to change style. You know, just find the will of God for your life and do what God wants you to do. Be happy. And then let me let me hurry because I I don't want to be long. But he said the reality, the request, the route, the reasonableness, the rejection. Then look at the renewing. The renewing. Verse two. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word transform means to change in character and conditions, to change in structure. In other words, don't be conformed, don't be lined up with the world, but be transformed by the renewing of mind that you may prove was that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In other words, you need a, a, a mind change in your life. You know, if you get your mind on something, that's pretty well what you're going to do. Right. Amen. Let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. Sometimes we, we, we our mind is so full of our own ways and thoughts. Let me, let me give you an illustration. We was down, uh, in, uh, down around Chipley, Florida, me and Brother Doug and, and Cindy Weaver and, and several of the preachers were down there in a meeting, and I took a fellow with me, and he's just an old country preacher, pastors, a little old church over there, runs about 30 people, been over there for years, probably never run over 50 people. And he's faithful at church, preaches every Sunday, Sunday morning, Wednesday night, he's right there at that church, been there for years. And I took him with me, just an old country boy. <laughs> He's the one that reads the Bible every day, every day at Greenback, Tennessee, which is a little old spot in the road. 20-something years, he goes over every morning, 6 o'clock, and sits and gets his little stool out, little PA system. He sits there as the road comes through, and he reads, he reads a solid hour. They even had him on the news. He reads a solid hour every morning. If people come by and blow their horn, and people there in town can hear his little speaker. And he, he, he reads the Bible. That does it every day. Every day but Sunday. And uh, he was with us. And we're all sitting there talking. And it's like they're giving their opinion, you know, and giving their opinion about this. And, and Brother Weaver, and if, if Brother Weaver, you're watching this, I'm sorry. But he was making more comments than anybody. And, and uh, this and that. And it's all throwing their opinions out. And I know we'll get this. Uh, the, the preacher stood up. And, and Brother Tyson McKee, and he stood up and he said, Fellas, can I say something? And your pastor said, Yeah. You know what he said? He said, What did God say about it? 
I punched Brother Doug. I said, say something. He said, I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> I said, see, it's your time. He said, I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> you know what? We're all throwing our opinion out. But he said, what did God say about it? You know, we got all our, got our opinions. But he said, be transformed. How do you transform by the immune of mind? You find out what God says about it. Right. You know, what God says, what God claims, what God, yeah. what the authority you have to stand on is God. He said, be transformed. How do you transform yourself? By the renewing of your mind. My, my granddaughter, she, uh, she's uh, soon be 19 next month. And, and, uh, <laughs> and when she graduated from high school, she was 18, she thought, you know, okay. She didn't need mama, she didn't need daddy. She didn't need nobody. She didn't want nobody to tell her what to do. She moved out from home. She going, nobody going to tell me. I don't know about it. I looked at her one day and I said, Lex, I said, the rest of your life somebody's going to tell you what to do. I said, Uncle Sam's going to tell you when to pay your taxes. I said, when you go to work, they're going to tell you when to come in, when to not come in. She was going to get a job. She told that lady. She told that lady if you're for a job. She said, well, I don't want to work on Fridays and Sundays. And I want to come in at this time, and I want off that time. <laughs> you know what that lady told her? That lady told her, said, well, you need to find somewhere else to look for a job. Because you don't come in here and tell us what to do. You come in here, you're going to work for us, we're going to tell you. Right. She come home, I said, you get that job? She said, no. I said, what happened? She said, she said, uh, she stuttered around, she said, she said, she said, she said what you said. <laughs> you know, they don't, they don't nobody tell you. Do their thing. I'm, I, I'm, I'm Lexi. Everything's okay. The whole world was stemming around me. Oh no, the world don't stem around. And and same thing in Christian life. We think everything was no. You be conformed to His transform. You read the Bible. That's how you transform your mind. Get your mind think. Okay, this is what happened. This is what works. Amen. And then let me close with this. Look at the realness. The realness. There's not only the reality. There is the will of God. There's not only requests, Paul beseeches, begs to find the will of God. And there's the route, present your body, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable. There's the reasonableness, which is your reasonable service. There is the rejection, be not conformed to this world. There's the renewing, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. And look at the, look at the realness of this thing, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Huh? If you do all that, you know what you'll find? What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? You ever heard somebody say, I am in the perfect will of God? There's been, times, there's been a few times that I didn't really know, I wondered, turned out okay, but there's been a few times I was in the perfect will of God. I preached to I preached uh, for Brother uh, Bob Cato in his new church. I preached over three weeks ago, I guess it was. And uh, I preached Sunday morning and Sunday night for Brother Bobby. And, uh, and I told, I told uh, my wife, I said, it, it, it's, on Saturday, I said, you know what? I said, of all the places I've been lately, I said, I feel like we're in the perfect will of God being where we are today. At, at this church and I preached Brother Josh that Sunday morning I'm not bragging on myself I'm talking about the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost took over and I preached myself to death on Sunday morning filled the altars up God really moved came back that night preached and God moved and God blessed you know and, and, and I felt good I had a peace in my heart I felt like I was in the perfect will of God and I preached what God you know what I left there with joy in my heart and Brother Bobby said we, we, uh, we might come back and have a meeting or something he told me the next day, he texted me the next day, I was driving down the road, and he said, you know what, preacher? He said, I've had 35, 40 people text me. We need to have a meeting, we need to have him back, we need to have, you know what? Because it was the will of God. You know, some, you know, and, and so it's important. Good, good, the good will of God. Boy, it's good to be in the will of God. And, and acceptable. Acceptable. In other words, God accepts you because you've presented your body, you've transformed, you've, you've conformed yourself away from the world, you've transformed your mind, you're in the will of God, and you're accepted by God. Boy, isn't it good to be accepted and know you're well-pleasing in His sight. 
and perfect. That word perfect, it just means mature, maturity, grown up in the will, you know. Don't mean you're perfect. Ain't nobody perfect. But sometimes we are in his perfect will. Perfect will. Remember years ago, years ago, I'll tell you this, and I'm through, it's 15 till, but years ago I was in a meeting up in Illinois, and the church was really in the bind. It's having a camp meeting time. Me and Brother Sammy Allen and Brother, uh, what's that guy who used to preach up in, uh, around Chicago? Uh, I can't even think of his name now. He's dead now, big time preacher. But anyway, we was all up in a meeting together, and the church was struggling with some debts, financial debts and stuff like that. There's probably 100 people there. And the pastor, he, he, he just expressed, you know, that he wanted people to really pray for him. Uh, in the church and pray for some of the things that was coming upon them some of the notes that they had and stuff like that and I will forget it uh, the Lord he, he they needed like $40,000 I believe it was and this is way back young and uh, and I'm sitting there first time I've ever been there <laughs> and the Lord spoke to my heart take an offer get that $40,000 and I'm sitting there thank God they don't know me they ain't going to pay no attention to me and Holy Ghost kept speaking my heart, speaking my heart, speaking my heart about it. And uh, and uh, finally I said, Lord, if that's if that's your true will, you you let me know. That's what you want me to do. And the pastor walked up and he said, well, I don't know, but he said, I feel like somebody's got something to say. Holy Ghost said, you. And I walked up there and I told the folks, I said, we need to take care of this. We can take care of it now. And we started taking up offering. Within 15 minutes, we had $45,000. And they paid all that off. I never would have dreamed it. 100 people there. I don't know where it come from. But you know what? Here's the will of God. If I'd get up there with the will of God, we probably wouldn't have got five. Amen? But it was the will of God for that to happen. So you've got to be careful. Is it the will of God? Is it not the will of God? When you make a move. Amen? And you've got to make, be careful. Is it the will of God I have this? Is it not the will of God I have this? Is it the will of God I make this decision? What is? What about this? Is it the will of God I sing this, preach that? Amen. It's the will of God I do this and do this. This is the place of my service. Don't be like don't be like the nation of Israel. And wander forty years, wander all your Christian life. Just wander, just be here, just come in, sit down, go home. No place of service. No real will of God. No real accomplishment for God. But there is a will of God. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the will of God. Amen. Every time I preach, I want to be in the will of God. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for Sunday school time. Help us in the worship service, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.